Hi, I'm Andre, and this is part four of the Uncollapsible Paragliders series. Um, and since last time, I've built this thing. Let me give you a close up what let me give you a close up what what this thing is and what it does. So since last time the electronics have been upgraded a bit and I've built this enclosure for it. I'll uh, show you the enclosure first. It's got a couple of uh, strings on either side so this can be uh, quickly attached to my neck so I can wear it around has an external battery on the outside that powers the Arduino and this is just a quick way to do and undo the connections. Uh, the strain gauges connect into here it's quite easily like that and that is a more secure connection than what it was before. Uh, and then inside these ports are connected to the Wheatstone bridges uh, up here. We have four of them. I'm currently only using two, but I can go up to four. Two um, two HX seven one ones on the inside. The data logger and pretty much the uh, 
kind of upgraded uh, version since I've uh, last shown you on, on part number three. Uh, and it has some more room to make it tidier in the future and put some of these components in there, maybe like a battery there and a switch on the outside um, and an easier way to get the, the SD card. But it's just a quick and easy way that I found to mount all these things together so it doesn't rattle and you can bang it around and I can uh, use it out in the field. So as it stands now, this thing is now a standalone data logger. Uh, don't need the computer anymore, can just power it here. All the data from two sensors gets uh, recorded to the SD card and timestamped, so I can compare that against the video when I record it. So, so let's go testing. Uh, different day, obviously, different clothes. Um, a little bit windy, it's, it's a, it comes and goes, it dies down and then it really picks up, so hopefully we can see that on the tensions. Um, I'll just show you the setup. Um, we've got two lines that usually we would uh, pull on that, and those are connected to the kite. Uh, and I'm just going to put the mail-ons in the middle here, so that we can get the tension straight off the straight off there and obviously you guys have seen uh, these kites before they're just um, two line kites <laughs> exciting for me. It's uh, an idea that I've had for a few years and then put a lot of months <laughs> of thinking and development and learning to uh, to get to this point and this little prototype actually been out and made some real world measurements. It's not an idea anymore. It's actually working to some degree but there's also quite a few things to learn. Uh, first couple of things is it's not so much learning because we kind of already knew it worked like that but um, it's to do with a kite. Uh, I think the most noticeable thing is that you can see when I pull on one side or the other, you can always see that the tension rises on the line that you pull to make the kite turn in that direction. And that is kind of obvious, but it's good to see that the equipment shows exactly the same thing that we thought and we feel when we're flying it. And the same thing with the power zone, because when we have uh, the two uh, line tensions, if we add them up, that is the total amount of weight uh, or tension that the kite is pulling. So we can see that when it's kind of like in that middle section, not too high and not too low and not too far towards the sides, it's when that total tension is the highest. And again, that agrees with what we thought and what, what we can feel when we're flying it. But, but also something that's quite not so obvious is that the you can actually see the order of magnitude of which what is the actual difference between being right on the edge, being right on the stall 
uh, how much weight is that pulling or when a wind gust comes and it's really pulling on the kite and you're right in the power zone how much that is you know what is the minimum and maximum tension window that this kite can uh, can operate in and now we actually have answers for that uh, the other thing that uh, as well is more important for the limitations of the equipment is I had to do a lot of cleanup uh, of the data because there's quite a severe temperature sag on the strain gauge. This is something I've noticed that happened here in the house but because it was a particular cold day today uh, as soon as you turn it on it, it starts going down 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 um, which is just a limitation of just having the one strain gauge without having a Wheatstone bridge of strain gauges or half a bridge and the rest are resistors that don't really change the resistance with temperature so that's just a limitation of the system and also there were a few blips where um, you know just wrong measurements so in like in 10,000 measurements there were like five or ten which is not a lot uh, but it would be much better to not have to do that cleaning up and it was always on one of the channels uh, so that tells me it's probably a bad connection somewhere so in the future I'd really like to eliminate all these things so it's um, it's a lot more robust so yeah, overall I'm really happy how it turned out. It, it highlighted the shortcomings of the of the of the prototype so far and it kind of takes me exactly the way I expect it to go, which is the next step is to design and build better sensors. Not only the shape of it, I don't think I'm going to go for Melons anymore. Uh, and also the strain gauges, you can't put single strain gauges so you really need half a bridge or even better it would be a full bridge on each of the sensors so you don't get these uh, these issues but yeah anyway this video is already long enough but I uh, wanna thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you're still watching at this point is because you really enjoyed the videos and I really appreciate all your support uh, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it really makes a difference into getting these projects from ideas into reality and all of the work that goes into it. So thank you so much for your support once again and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!